greatly um, uh, influence uh, the way of uh, uh, inter the, the, the way of interventions on the historical memory and uh, uh, they must be treated in a very general truly interdisciplinary point of view and uh, today I want to focus on the uh, mechanical characteristics of block measure, in particular block measure. Do you, do you remember? Maybe you can remember that we distinguished uh, distinguished this by from with distinguished uh, between uh, block measure and the cementitious measure. And uh, you will see that the possibility to to approach the study, the structural studies of this kind of two cross categories of measures is uh, different. And uh, I, wa uh, we I want to, to give you an overview on the possibility of uh, mechanical, the, the availability of mechanical models uh, uh, for uh, historical measures. And uh, first of all, let me recall which is the Italian and the European laws that are uh, in, it, in Italy, the so-called, I, I also mentioned this, uh, uh, this law that is testo unico per le norme tecniche di costruzioni, to which are uh, associated the so-called linee guida, and I will show you some uh, basic concepts that are included in this uh, linee guida for the evaluation and reduction of seismic risk, as uh, seismic risk in our country, in Italy, is uh, uh, a very important uh, uh, point. And also this uh, law recalls the European codes that uh, uh, essentially are focused on the same, uh, on the same uh, topics. And uh, I don't rem I didn't remember that uh, this slide was in Italian, but I will translate for you. And uh, um, what is uh, very crucial in the recent uh, laws uh, is the possibility to focus attention on the correct structural modeling, which uh, takes into account uh, uh, the uh, nature of the uh, object of study. And in particular, we, we, you, you will see that uh, also the law is uh, focused and distinguish, distinguishes between deformable models and rigid models. And we will see what I mean uh, with this uh, definition. But uh, uh, I can anticipate that in the case of uh, deformable models, the focus uh, is uh, on the evaluation of the strength of materials. And uh, as we said uh, the last, in the last lesson, this kind of approach can be adopted for uh, cementitious measures uh, in which uh, the performance of the material is uh, uh, very uh, prominent. While we mean rigid models, uh, the models uh, in which uh, the essential point uh, is uh, the geometry and uh, the limit equilibrium. And we will study also by hand uh, with uh, some exercises uh, the um, possibility to evaluate simply evaluate the collapse loads and collapse mechanisms for systems made of rigid elements that interact among each other. And in this case, the focus is not on strength of material, but on the limit equilibrium that has uh, essentially a geometric uh, um, connotate. And the recent uh, Italian laws will reflect uh, this uh, point of view. 
and the law was changed, uh, changed after some important uh, earthquakes uh, on of uh, 2005. And uh, these are the basic points of the so-called Line Guida. These Line Guida are also published on my website, but they are in Italian and uh, I don't know if you can uh, read them, but the essential point uh, I will resume now for you is the knowledge of the uh, of the construction of the uh, building that means uh, for instance uh, to have to let the, the to focus on the geometrical survey that is the first step of uh, any investigation so you have to describe the geometry of the, 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 the construction and in particular individuate the uh, crack patterns within uh, the, your, uh, your building. And then it is important to recognize, if present, the texture of the, of the measure, if uh, this measure is made of uh, uh, blocks or bricks, and uh, the kind of textures, as we will see, uh, is strongly influence uh, the performance, the final performance of uh, the wool building. And uh, then another point that is uh, very important, uh, it's a two, this is very important, is to consider different uh, approaches. And uh, you cannot trust to the results of uh, only one approach, as uh, this is uh, uh, full of uncertainties, uh, and uh, it is better to compare the results uh, with different approaches, uh, and uh, essentially with the survey and the experience uh, of uh, the direct uh, physical experience of the manufacturer. And uh, in particular, concerning the survey, the survey, in the survey, you must uh, individuate which are the, con the element, constitute, the constitute, constituents uh, uh, of the, um, of the wool uh, uh, construction and uh, the connections between the elements. So the survey, must be uh, focused on the individuation of the texture, the size, uh, and uh, uh, and the texture and the size of the of the measure. Uh, we also can uh, include uh, our uh, analysis within uh, the seismic uh, uh, laws that in Italy are uh, important and uh, you will recognize uh, in which uh, zone uh, uh, zone the, the, the zones are divided uh, into uh, different level of risks and uh, you will recognize uh, in which zone we are included and then we can uh, adopt a method to identify the safety of uh, of the building. And uh, in particular, focusing on the kind of measure that I call uh, the block measure, it is very important to uh, individuate the so-called rule of art. That means, uh, except of course for the concrete cement, uh, cementitious uh, measures, with the particular measure, with particular cohesive pro pro properties, and for which the mechanical per structural performance strongly depend on the material on the material only except for this kind of measures the historical measure can be reconducted to this category and you can remember the measures that we classified as strictly block measures but also, in Plecton, at, uh, in the Greek and the Latin manner, 
uh, in which we can recognize a rule uh, and uh, that uh, allow us to compare the construction to blo a block, a regular block measure construction. And the ideal uh, uh, way of uh, um, uh, the, 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 the rule of art is uh, uh, realized by the so-called opus quadratum. And uh, that uh, can be traced to the study of block measuring. And the opus quadratum is uh, the, the representation of the so-called rule of art. In uh, this kind of measures, uh, we can uh, uh, recognize that it is very important to take into account the shape, the size, and the disposition of the stones, <coughs> which play a decisive role uh, in the evaluation of the final uh, uh, performance. Another point that uh, is uh, very important to, to take into account is friction. Friction is the only material properties that uh, in this case uh, uh, has a very significant role as we will see in the future. So the problem of brick block measuring can be described as a problem of uh, no tension and frictional contact among rigid bodies. This is because uh, along the interfaces, the, 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 block, the, the blocks are, are, can be considered rigid because they are uh, um, strongly resistant, in particular to compression, but the interfaces, the joints are weaker. And uh, along the interfaces, we can uh, uh, detect uh, the opening or also sliding. And sliding is uh, governed uh, by friction. It depends on the roughness of the surfaces uh, in uh, contact. So these are the basic steps of a structural analysis of a measure building. And the first step is uh, the individuation of the so-called building rule. And the building rule is, uh, uh, we, we, we call the building rule the rule of art. Marco, non accetti tu? Te devo, ti devo, ti devo, te devo, te devo. Sorry, just a moment. Faccio amministratore. Yes. Ok. E eh, allora controllo là. Questa si vede? Yes. Ok. And the uh, rule of art is the first step. And uh, this is a slide in which I mean what, uh, which is uh, the uh, effect of the rule of art. And uh, you can see in the picture that is an irregular measuring. And this is regular measuring uh, is a very, uh, of a very poor quality and is schematized as uh, in the picture in, uh, on the right side. And uh, differently, this is an irregular measure uh, that is uh, realized using uh, a good uh, rule of extraction. And the ideal representation of this regular measure is uh, this one. Uh, could you see my mouse from the uh, from the from the house? Se io muovo il bel mouse, lo vedete, Blaian? Not me. No, non vedono. Loro lo vedono. Però è strano perché. Ah. Eh? 
No, dico se io indico col mouse loro non vedono. So this no. is the picture on the right side of the slide and the picture on the right side of the slide you can see a mesory that is not an opus quadratum but is made of bricks that are uh, uh, disposed in a very good way and the description ideal description on the right side is uh, this, the same of uh, uh, mesory with the uh, the higher level of uh, interlocking so you can check that uh, on the left side the case of uh, poor uh, misery with no interlocking among uh, stones collapse uh, as show, shown in the picture while on the right side we have a good misery with a good level of interlocking and the collapse is uh, on the right side the same of a monolith this means a real of art if misery is uh, realized in a very uh, good way the behavior is can be reconducted to have the behavior of a monolith and this is the the, 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 the ideal condition and uh, your survey must be focused on uh, uh, individuate uh, which is uh, the constructive uh, the building rule e, in order to, to know if uh, the, the performance in terms of structural safety is good or not and uh, in this case uh, you can also see that uh, in the case of the misery of the right, the, the right side, we have the stones that we call the diatoni that are interposed along the thickness and the, in the, 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 the colors we have you strongly depend on this, uh, the disposition of this kind of stones that are bonding stones called diatoni. The and these are other kinds of uh, misery. These are real measures that was uh, uh, the result of a survey made in a, in a site. Uh, in excuse me. That is uh, called, uh, uh, that is. Uh, uh, I can't see the screen. In, the, in Sicily. And uh, on the left side, we have uh, a good misery that can be represented as in the picture on the top as a regular misery with a high level of interlocking. In the middle, we have uh, a, a misery of uh, middle uh, uh, quality and No, non, non lo sto cambiando. Ah no, va bene. Questa non l'hanno vista? Cioè questa quando facevo questa non l'hanno mezzerata? Ragazzi, però da casa parlate that you have to, to talk as I couldn't understand if you are following the slides or not. Eh? E lo so, ma questa quindi non ho capito niente di questo. Giusto? Is there some, someone who can help me? But from home, uh, uh, professor, uh, now we can see, but uh, if you can please uh, repeat. Could you say me something from home? Because I was talking to the people in the room, but uh, uh, I now realize that uh, you didn't uh, follow my slides. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, we didn't uh, see, but uh, now we see. And uh, if you please can repeat. 
Bledia, mi dici cosa hanno visto e capito? Perché non, 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 non si riesce ad andare. Uh, but can you hear us, professor, or no? Eh? Can you hear us? <clears throat> ah, okay. Because uh, one student was uh, telling that she didn't see the last slides. But this slide, uh, did you no, follow no. the comments of this slide? No. It was stuck in another slide. Maybe if you don't... <coughs> Maybe if you don't uh, put in full screen, just keep it like this. Allora, I need that you switch on the cameras and uh, interact with me. Otherwise, I switch off my computer and uh, perform the lessons all, only in the room. Could you switch on your cameras? Interesting. Cioè, è solo inutile. Oh, finalmente. At last. Could you say me what you are able to, 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 to follow? Are you sleeping? Uh, professor, this slide, the last one, uh, if you can please repeat the explanation. Okay, which one? Uh, exactly that one. Vabbè, questa qua. Sì, prego. Questo? They didn't see the slides changing uh, while you explain, so they were asking you to explain again the last parts. I think that uh, they cannot see the full screen, so I cannot, I can use the screen not uh, in the full modality. Maybe it's good. Eh? Questa va bene, no? Okay, just to re, uh, repeat, uh, quickly repeat uh, the idea in this slide. Uh, the idea is. The possibility of a good measure, a measure with a high level of interlocking, to represent uh, a monolithic behavior. This is uh, the case of the measure on the right side of the wall, the slide, and uh, the case of a poor measure that is the case uh, without interlocking, uh, is uh, the worst one. So the performance of measuring is uh, strictly related to the presence of uh, bonding stones within the thickness, which realized the interlocking. And these are three kinds of measures in which we have uh, on the left side the Sì, ma vedi che c'è il mouse, io lo vedo lì. On the left side, you can see the good level of misery which realizes the rule of art and behaves as a monolithic, uh, a monolithic wall. In the middle, we have a misery of uh, medium level of uh, interlocking. And uh, on the right side is uh, another kind of measure, assembly, that is uh, not uh, of uh, uh, good quality. And uh, these are uh, the surveys of uh, some real measure in uh, the center of uh, Syracuse, uh, that is a town in the Sicily. Ortigia is the name of this uh, place. And uh, I also uh, suggested you a book in the uh, program, which is uh, de um, dedicated to the investigation that we performed some years ago in, the, uh, in this uh, very important uh, historical uh, measuring center that is uh, Ortigia in the center of Syracuse. So, 
let me see. Uh, we will be able to do some calculations and uh, convince uh, about this. On the left side, we have the measure that I defined the best one. And this is. Uh, Uh, and this is uh, the uh, the measure with the, the atony, that means uh, that is bonding stones uh, within the thickness. This is the level, uh, the, 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 the medium level uh, of uh, interlocking measure, and this is uh, the low level of interlocking uh, measure. If you consider, maybe Marco last. Uh, we uh, showed you the behavior of uh, a monolithic block. Let's uh, represent the weight of this block with a force here called the P uh, applied in the uh, wall center. And also consider an horizontal force here named F, which represents statically represents the effect of a seismic action the seismic action is dynamic and uh, depends on the acceleration of the ground but we can represent this action from a statical point of view without inertial forces i mean and uh, this force is proportional with a factor uh, that is uh, greater than um, zero to the self weight. And this is a body, horizontal body force. Okay, so P is the self weight and F is the horizontal. And by performing uh, some calculation, I will show you which, which model I used for these uh, calculations, we found that for the good interlocking measure, the horizontal force F is 0 0.245 per the self weight. In the middle, we have 0 0.2, and in the worst case, we have 0 0.17. In the case of a monolithic blocks that Marco showed you uh, last, uh, last week, and the collapse load, this, sorry, the collapse coefficient, proportional coefficient of a monolith is the ratio between the, the thickness and the height, height of, the, of the wall. And in this case, this ratio is 0 0.25. So you can recognize that in the first case, 0 0.245 is quite similar to the collapse coefficient of the monolith. So the left side wall is uh, good measure with a good level of interlocking, which behaves as a monolith. And this means rule of art. What we call rule of art. And this is another example in which we can see a measure with a good level. This is a wall with a good level of interlocking and in the left side, the coefficient of friction is uh, uh, the maximum possible. And uh, on the right side is uh, zero. Uh, between uh, the left and the right side, just change this uh, material property, that is the coefficient of friction. But what is important to, to recognize in this slide uh, see, for instance, uh, the, the right side uh, analysis uh, uh, in which the friction is not uh, uh, taken into account. So to simplify our uh, uh, observation, and uh, we can see that under a concentrated load, a localized load, 
if the, the wall is made of a good uh, interlocking, this can distribute the load. While in the case in which we, we don't have uh, uh, interlocking, the load cannot be distributed. And in the next slide, we can see this in terms of internal stresses. Here on the left side, we have the wall without level of interlocking, and you can see the, 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 the black rows the, the represents the distribution of the stresses inside the wall. And on the right side, you can see the distribution of, uh, of the load that is uh, allowed by the geometrical interlocking. So a good uh, wall is a, a wall made of uh, elements that are assembled together, respecting uh, possibly the so-called rule of art. And you can... Uh, uh, assess the safety of a measure just uh, with a survey that uh, represents uh, this uh, situation. These are some uh, uh, different representation of distribution of the load that of course uh, will depend not only on the interlocking but also on the size. Because the size of the walls, and I mean the size, the size of the bricks with respect to the size, the global size of the panel, of the wall, also has a very significant role. So, the first step was the individuation of the building role, the rule of art. The second step is the individuation of the state of conservation of cracking pattern, the state of conservation and of the cracking patterns. So when you have a measure, also the case in which a building is not made of uh, pieces of bricks or stones, you can recognize some uh, uh, cracks which defines the, the, the patterns and, for instance, represent the, 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 the parts that remains uh, um, with the internal cohesion as a rigid bodies. And, the crack, and uh, along the crack patterns, you can consider the, 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 you can uh, represent these crack patterns as joints among rigid bodies. So also in uh, uh, measures uh, that are of uh, cementitious or concrete uh, uh, nature, we can also use uh, the description that uh, is uh, based on rigid bodies, interacting rigid bodies, and detect the collapse mechanisms and collapse loads also in this case. Then you have to, of course, to individuate which are the actions on your structure that could be self-weight and external loading, additional vertical load, or also seismic actions that uh, are represented by horizontal loads, generally horizontal body loads. And another important thing is to detect if some settlements of the ground are present, as the cracking patterns often depends on the settlements of the basis of the the measure. And uh, to obtain a description of this kind, uh, you can use, uh, of course, a survey that uh, uh, we can call this as a structural survey. Because if the survey is uh, finalized to individuate crack patterns, we can uh, denominate it structural survey. But you can also 
uh, use uh, some documents and uh, for instance uh, you can see also in uh, all the uh, case studies of uh, other students of the, uh, the, the previous years uh, that they compared uh, some uh, information about uh, the history of construction that can uh, help you in defining uh, the quality of the building because it depends on the times, it depends on the kind of uh, construction of the surroundings. Uh, many, many information can help you in the analysis of the state of conservation of the building. And then, in case uh, when it's possible, if you have uh, some results of experimental analysis, uh, you can improve. Uh, your uh, description. After this, after this photography of the situation of uh, the building, you can, we can decide and define a model to assess the safety of our structure. So we can define the mechanical model for instance, decide if the measure is of category block measure or concrete measure. And then select the proper computational models that are uh, useful to perform the structural check. And the structural check, let me repeat again, that could be of the strength kind you can define the, the strengths of the materials or to define the equilibrium. So the collapse loads and the collapse mechanisms. These are two different approaches that of course can be uh, used together and then the results can be compared. After that, you can start the uh, selection of the, uh, the ways of restoration of, uh, of your building. Uh, concerning the definition of uh, the mechanical model, concerning the definition of the mechanical model, uh, we can uh, grossly uh, distinguish between uh, the mechanical models for opus quadratum, that is for block measure or measures that can be reconducted to block measures, or the case of concrete measure, cementitious, continuous measure. So the first one, uh, you can also name these uh, uh, discontinuous measures made of blocks, and the other one, uh, continuous measure. And in this case, we can use, as I said before, uh, rigid models, which uh, consider the limit equilibrium, not the strength. And uh, we can use this kind of models based on limit equilibrium for any kind of block measuring. Uh, also reconducted reconduct to this, the M. Blackton, and so on. But, uh, as I said before, also for uh, measure with, uh, in which we recognize the crack patterns and divide some, um, um, some intrinsically uh, connected parts and uh, Discontinuity surfaces that are the surfaces of, uh, of cracks. Another possibility is to consider deformable models. And deformable models normally are used in so-called continuum description that are, uh, that is better to um, that, uh, that are uh, uh, useful to describe the, ca the case of continuous measuring. But which are the problems? In the case of uh, 
rigid models, the problem is solely that we neglect the formability, but this is not a big problem. In the other case, as we will see, the deform deformable models, the problem is define a constitutive law that is uh, uh, that uh, can uh, be adopted for measuring, because measure is not linear, and the possibility to to represent in the real nonlinear behavior is affected by a high level of uncertainties. Moreover, it is uh, very complicated to define nonlinear constitutive laws. And the parameters that are involved, as I said before, are affected by high level of uncertainties. And if you, in a mo model that is non-linear, linear, consider also a small variation of the wide range of parameters, the results are incredibly different. So there is not, uh, um, it's not uh, useful to, to, to adopt uh, complex models and which results are not, uh, uh, are not safe, are not deterministic. Uh, which are the features? of a mechanical model for measuring. The features for a mechanical model for measuring are here resumed. First of all, as we said, the memory of the internal structure. That means the memory of the shape, of the size, and the texture of the world. And this is the first step that uh, the survey will uh, um, will provide. The second uh, important uh, feature is, uh, as I said, the constitutive model that is not non-linear. And we will see some kind of non-linear behavior of uh, uh, interest, interesting, uh, uh, at least in uh, my uh, thought. The other feature that uh, plays a very important role is friction. Because uh, you will see that the quantity taken into account uh, uh, the presence of friction will affect, uh, strongly affect the results. And uh, if uh, in, in the bus, when the, um, for instance, a measure a measure reconstruction was uh, uh, designed uh, to consider the presence of uh, infinite friction is, uh, is important uh, from a designing point of view. But uh, if the point of view is uh, the check, checking of the safety of a structure, uh, to take into account the presence of friction or not uh, is uh, important because uh, consider the possibility of slide between the blocks uh, is uh, and not uh, neglect neglectable uh, uh, aspects. Concerning the models, I already said that we have models that are deformable models uh, for which uh, we can uh, perform a uh, check on the resistance, on the strength, focusing on materials, and the models which considers uh, the limit equilibrium for which we will, uh, we will uh, check the limit equilibrium. Oh, these are an overview of the kind of modeling approaches, approaches present in the literature. And uh, let's focus on this one. This uh, approach 
is uh, can be named macromechanical model. Macromechanical model means to use simplified models to describe a structure. And this is a case of a macromechanical model in which you can see in this slide, the building is represented using a finite element uh, formulation. Do you know which are finite element uh, codes? These are some commercial codes to per for performing any kind of structural analysis that are also used for measuring as well as for any other kind of materials which constitute the building. And this is a an example of uh, a discretization of a structure. This is the section of a church in which, uh, the, of course, the measure is continuous and uh, this continuous body is discretized into a number of pieces. And this number of pieces is a number of uh, uh, so-called finite elements. And these uh, finite elements uh, are connected uh, through some points uh, that are called the nodes. And uh, the governing equation of the problem that uh, can be reconducted to compatibility equations, uh, equilibrium equations, uh, are valid only uh, into the nodes. So the problem. Uh, of the, uh, the equilibrium and uh, uh, compatibility uh, and compatibility of a continuum that uh, is uh, governed by differential equations can be reconducted to a problem <coughs> of the equilibrium of a number of finite elements and these uh, an algebraic problems that can be used uh, can be solved using uh, commercial uh, computational codes. These codes are named the finite elements, finite elements code. This is an approximate solution of the problem, but uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, quite refined and depends, of course, uh, on the size of the meshes the size of the elements. So the discretization is the core of this uh, procedure. How can we represent uh, our structure by using uh, some, uh, a number of finite elements? How many finite elements uh, are needed to have uh, a solution that uh, Appro well approximates the exact solution, that is the solution of the differential problem. This is the core of, of a finite element uh, uh, approach. And we have a wide range of uh, computational codes that can be used to the same. And uh, in the case of Masary, the key point is that we need to use a code in which the uh, constitutive law is not linear. And when we use some refined, uh, sophisticated uh, computational codes for performing a structural analysis, uh, we have to select the constitutive laws that are, uh, that, they, that are very difficult to be defined because they depend on the parameters and the parameters are many. And the variation of these parameters imply a significant variation of the solution. So it's a very hard task because of the uncertainty of the, of the <laughs> original idea, but we have the one of the most uh, 
expertise in this matter and uh, there are a lot of computational codes that is, if you are uh, interested uh, in uh, applying this uh, of course we can uh, uh, we can help in uh, this uh, maybe we can improve uh, this kind uh, the standard ones, uh, uh, one of the most uh, diffused is uh, SAP, SAP code. And uh, in the case of nonlinear uh, paper, we have uh, Abacus uh, and uh, ANSYS uh, and uh, many other code. But uh, if one, if one of you is interested, we are, uh, uh, we appreciate because uh, we can, uh, um, we can compare solutions obtained with this kind of approaches and the solution obtained using some simplified approach that I will show you. So this is the so code. Uh -huh. See, so we I cannot understand with the mask. This is a problem. Yes, of course. So this is uh, comp this, the solution of uh, com a finite element computational codes in which uh, the elements uh, are described by the, uh, there are some library elements uh, and the, in this case uh, library elements uh, is, uh, um, no, because in this uh, slide, these are standard elements. We also have in this the codes that I mentioned before, the in the library, the brick element. And the brick element has inside a nonlinear uh, a nonlinear uh, constitutive uh, uh, law. But uh, the ones that I show here are the standard ones, in which the elements are solid elements with the linear elastic uh, uh, laws. This is uh, the most uh, used uh, approaches, uh, but I will show you uh, right now that uh, these are very unacceptable results because measure is not linear elastic and the solution is uh, not valid. It is better to don't perform uh, calculations uh, with respect to performs finite element calculations uh, with the linear finite element codes. But uh, if you want to use uh, some refined codes in which the nonlinear behavior can be uh, included, this is possible to do. It's uh, a little bit difficult, but uh, it's uh, more realistic. Oh, these are other linear elastic models. I will show you which are the uh, problems of the linear elastic approach. And uh, this is uh, represented uh, in a book, uh, Italian book uh, that is uh, very uh, known and uh, diffused, uh, that is the Manuale del Consolidamento uh, di Paolo Rocchi. And these are some elastic uh, analysis of a uh, measure rebuilding uh, in th this particular case uh, is uh, uh, the tower of Nocera Umbra. It's a building uh, in uh, uh, the center of Italy, a very seismic uh, site, a, a, a site of uh, high level of uh, seismicity. And you can see that these are some results of the static analysis and uh, by colors are represented state of stress, but in misery, we don't know which is the stress. Because the stress cannot be defined as in other materials uh, as iron <laughs> uh, or uh, other kinds of ideal materials. Stress uh, has, uh, must be defined in a very refined way. So, if you find that this, uh, for this uh, tension in a portion, this is not uh, really true. And I will show why. Moreover, you can see the results. These are the results of a dynamical analysis. But this is not uh, a building made of uh, 
still. And uh, a tower, a tower, a masonry tower made of, uh, in that case, uh, very incoherent uh, masonry cannot be half as uh, a skyscraper in, uh, made of steel or uh, reinforced concrete. It's not possible. So these are analysis that they has, have not any uh, meaning. Just to do such, just to perform some colored uh, uh, calculations to 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 leave to the uh, offices for having uh, some uh, authorizations, but uh, this is not true. Measure is not steel. Measure is not uh, reinforced concrete. Measure is measure, and the modeling of measure must be finalized to detect the real behavior. Otherwise, it's better just to have a survey and to have a qualitative information about uh, the, 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 the outcome. That is much better than perform uh, not uh, realistic uh, computations. And uh, to demonstrate this, I want to show you a solution that was uh, proposed by Alberto Castigliano. So Alberto Castigliano, maybe some of, one of you knows, uh, I don't know if you, <laughs> also at home. Vladia, tu conosci Alberto Castigliano? Ha studiato? Sì, ma... Eh? Un po' di più dalle tue lezioni. Did you study at school? Uh, ah, sì, sì, sì. Theorems. The theorem of Castellani, yeah, the okay. energetic so theorem. If you start, if you uh, follow uh, a course of uh, theory of elasticity, one of the most uh, important results of the theory of elasticity are the theorems of uh, Alberto Castigliano. And this was uh, theorems for, uh, with which uh, we can solve uh, hyperstatic problems uh, and historically this was uh, the, among uh, the first formulations uh, um, um, the, most, the, 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 the first formulations uh, produced uh, in the literature. So Alberto Castigliano was uh, one of the most important uh, scholar of uh, theory of elasticity. But when he had to perform an analysis of, of a measure bridge, he recognized that the theory of elasticity fails. So the most important scholar, at least in, Ita in Italy, of the theory of elasticity was the first who recognized the unicity and the singularity of the problem of measure. And uh, he proposed a method that is that uh, is very clever and i want to show you also in details but now just to to have an idea i i want to show you which is uh, the hypothesis uh, uh, that castigliano uh, proposed and the note that the proposal uh, proposal of castigliano is uh, the origin of uh, any kind of of nonlinear approach for measure. So it's uh, the origins uh, of the nonlinearity of the behavior of uh, measure. And this is the idea. Let's consider the section of a, uh, an arch bridge between uh, real elements uh, that uh, could be uh, blocks, um, block stones, or discretized stones in a continuous measure. So consider the cross section and look at the cross section. This is the distribution, the linear distribution of the stresses in the section using the so-called Navier 
solution. Did you know, do you know the Navier solution, sigma is, uh, etc. It's a linear solution. And this is uh, the central, this is a rectangular cross-section, for instance, and this is uh, the region named the central core of inertia. In Italiano si dice nocciolo centrale di inertia. It's a geometric, uh, a geometric figure that can be uh, can be constructed for any uh, geom geometry of sections. So, consider a distribution, linear distribution, and consider the so-called neutral axis, in which you have the vanishing of the stresses. What does it mean? This means that the session is partialized, and uh, of course divided in a part that is in compression and another part that is in tension. In that case, for instance, this is C is uh, the pressure center. It's the point in which the uh, upper uh, block interact with the, the lower. So, as Mesuri cannot support tension, he decides to remove the portion that is in tension and start an iterative process in which, for the second step, for instance, we have the same position of the external load but a different position of the neutral axis, that is the axis along which we have the vanishing of the stresses. Then he removed this portion. And then this is a convergent solution, as in this case, you can see that uh, the, 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 um, the center of pressure is on the uh, boundary of the inertia core. The inertia, re the, the region, uh, inertial core, uh, come si chiama? Uh, inertial core region. Uh, maybe you remember from the theory of elasticity that this uh, region that is called the inertial core, is uh, construction, constructed by considering the, act, the neutral axis tangent to the original section. So if uh, we are in this uh, uh, situation, we have that the section mm, does not partialize. The section is uh, all Compressed, of course, if the force is of compression. So this is the convergence case. And he stopped and passed to the other section of the arch. <clears throat> this is an iterative process that he performed by hand and that we reproduced with the computational uh, program and apply to some uh, uh, cases. I will show only this case in which we wanted to investigate the behavior of a portion of the Colosseum. And the portion of the Colosseum is this one. That is the connection between, this is the external, the external line made of uh, blocks, uh, travertino, and the internal, that is uh, this one, and it's made uh, by bricks. It's a different kind of uh, measure. And uh, there was uh, a restoration uh, intervention in 1845 by Salvi and Canina, that was engineers uh, who wanted to assess the safety of the seismic safety of the Colosseum that uh, interposed some chains. 
between the two uh, the two the two walls and uh, we use it the solution this is a survey a very accurate survey that uh, my colleagues uh, Maria Lanni did format and this was the solution and let me show the solution that uh, we found uh, this uh, on the the right side of this slide uh, at uh, the bottom is represented a finite element mesh for the solution uh, let me see elastic the first step solution is elastic linear elastic and the navier formulas holds and uh, this is the line which connects the forces inside the structure and the so-called truss line. And you can see that in the case of elastic solution, the truss line is always external. So this is a, a not realistic solution. The first step is a linear elastic solution that is not acceptable because uh, all the portion of the older structure uh, means that all the structure is in tension. This is not true because Colosseum is one of the most solid uh, uh, buildings of the world and uh, supported a lot of earthquakes. Uh, we hope that uh, it remains uh, uh, forever. Anyway. By applying the process of Castigliano, the iterative process of Castigliano, of course, we performed in-house code to perform these calculations, not by hand. And we found, consider this graphic of convergence, one, two, three, n steps, in which we found that the truss line is always internal to the, 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 the thickness. This is the final solution in which we don't have more tension. So in this slide, the portion that are represented in black are the portion in tension but the other portion are compressed. So the aim of the Castigliano solution is to find uh, the real port, the real resistant portion of uh, uh, measure structure because is, it is uh, in all parts compressed. So when you have a measure, you don't know which is the stress. And if you said uh, these are uh, intention, this is not true. Let uh, me stress that on the uh, left side of this slide, we have this, uh, the, the solution for the sum of a finite element uh, code with the only linear elastic uh, behavior. On the right side, we have the final solution in which the behavior is nonlinear elastic. These are some kind of nonlinear elastic codes that are implemented, nonlinear elastic laws are implemented within the finite element codes, commercial finite element codes, and also in this graph. Uh, you can uh, see that we have uh, in the uh, abscissas uh, the deformations and uh, uh, in the vertical um, axis uh, are the stresses and this is uh, the nonlinear behavior, the, the constitutive flow that is uh, intrinsic in uh, implemented in the code. You can see that the 
compressive behavior that is uh, in this part of the diagram is extremely different uh, from the tension behavior. And the parameters that define the strength in compression, the uh, elastic, the, 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 the um, uh, longitudinal uh, elastic modulus uh, in uh, compression, and the um, parameter of uh, um, tension resistance, and so on, are a lot of parameters that uh, strongly affect the solution. So, in a nonlinear uh, uh, in a nonlinear uh, modeling, uh, there are some uh, many, many, many parameters to define, uh, and uh, often the solution strongly depends from this. So it's a very difficult, uh, difficult task. And this is uh, the case analyzed by one of my colleagues uh, some years ago. Uh, this is a church uh, in uh, Sicily, in Catania, San Nicola Arena, in which uh, this is the survey of the church. And this is uh, the portion analyzed for which uh, he compared a finite element solution with a nonlinear code. with some other kinds of solutions that I will show uh, that I will show in uh, the following. Um, to conclude uh, this part of macromechanical models, I want uh, just to mention all, also some uh, uh, approaches that are uh, uh, diffused and used by professionals. And this code is uh, named, uh, you know, so se questo esiste in letteratura anglosassone, questa tipologia di, di modelli, is a frame equivalent models. These, uh, these are models in which the measuring is represented by these are the gray parts are considered as rigid and the red part as deformable and simplified uh, and the behavior is uh, simplified uh, with uh, mm, some uh, uh, structural elements and uh, these are the codes that are uh, used uh, uh, as i said in uh, in the practice, the code are not linear, but what is very difficult to, um, to, to validate is the behavior of these gray parts as a rigid, as it depends on the way in which a measure is constructed. And uh, if, for instance, uh, we have uh, some uh, settlement, I will show you also some results. Uh, uh, this is this uh, behavior of these parts uh, uh, are not uh, really rigid. So also this kind of simplified models uh, presents uh, uh, many, uh, present some criticism. So the models of elastic, uh, uh, the defined the, the models are, the results are not, uh, not always uh, uh, realistic. In this case, uh, there are some cases in which we can use uh, this kind of simplified models, but these are not general. And uh, finally, I want to focus on so-called micromechanical models, but I think that it's better to have a short step before entering in this, because it's an interesting uh, uh, way of uh, doing, uh, and I need uh, uh, your attention. So, uh, we are, uh, let me start again at uh, four o'clock. Uh, Bledian. Hi, Bledian. Hi, Bledian. Hi. 
I was thinking uh, while uh, remembering this uh, lesson to the possibility to to implement again the Castiglianos uh, solution. What oh, do yeah. you think about this? In a code? Huh? To uh, develop uh, another code. Yes, uh, for instance, uh, for a simple uh, structure like an arch. Okay. And the results that I showed that was uh, by from my very old uh, Fortran code. I don't know if I have again. Uh, but the code was based on this idea, uh, finite element solution, then checking on the cross sections of the position of the neutral axis and removing uh, the uh, parts 